What's up, everybody? It's Tuesday, and we're going to get into Thread Talk Tuesday with Denver and Teresa here, so let's get into it. What accent was that? It was like a million in one. I don't one. know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, good morning. If you're listening to this on your 6 a.m. drive to work. I hope I woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Well, are you excited for today? I'm very excited. very excited. I'm very excited. The theme for today is going to be red flags. Yes. So we're going to go across some Reddit stories that we've been reading that are major red flags of maybe you should reconsider your relationship with this person if they keep dropping all these same things that are happening in these stories here. Mm-hmm. I have a couple like new relationship ones, some even like old relationship ones, some even like engaged they don't know if they should maybe break. freshly married. Yeah, yeah. I got some good ones here. All kinds of relationships in this. People show their red flags, like even later on in the relationship, which is scary. It is sometimes yeah. it's like first date, second, couple dates in. Sometimes, sometimes it's like three years, years in. Yeah. Sometimes it's like after the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still waiting for Teresa's red flags. They're coming. Yeah, I've already, I've already like <laughs> accepted a few of them. Maybe, Excuse me. Maybe we'll get into that near the end of the episode. We'll oh. air some dirty laundry here with Teresa's red flags. Cool. I don't have any red flags to share of you. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice uh, to me. Yeah, I'm just joking. I don't really have any that I actually can think <laughs> of. I was just maybe as we go through this, we'll uh, relate to some of these stories. There were some. I will say there were some stories. Um, that I found that like people said they were red flags. And then I was like, hmm, I don't really like, I kind of do that or I agree with that. Like I said, Dries is a walking red flag. That's I don't know rude. how I do it. <laughs> All right. Whatever. We're not like these people in these stories that we found. <laughs> nope. Okay. You want to get into it? Let's get into it. You want to go first? Sure. All right. What you got for the first story? Okay. I'll start us off with a post from Best of Redditor Updates. My husband-to-be wants everyone to know I'm not pure. It's exactly what the title says. I've been with my fiancé for six years and engaged for the past eight months. I've been doing most of the wedding planning, but my fiancé, let's just call him Ryan, will give his input here and there. So about a month ago, Ryan out of nowhere said he was talking to some of his coworkers and thinks that I shouldn't wear a white dress. This was totally weird to me. Ryan is a very artistic guy, so I figured this was more about how the photos would turn out or something along those lines, but I'm set on wearing white. I told him this and I could see that he was very annoyed, but he let it go. Two weeks ago, I finally picked and paid for my dress and this caused a huge argument. Ryan again came to me very annoyed. He asked to see the dress I picked, but I said no because I wanted it to be a surprise for our wedding day. He asked me to at least tell him what color it was, and when I said it was white, he threw a fit. I honestly do not see why this is a big deal. Almost everyone wears white on their wedding day. When I asked him what color he thought I'd be wearing, he told me I should wear red. Again, this was super weird to me. I asked him why I would wear red to our wedding, and he told me that brides only wear white when they are pure. For some background, Ryan and I started dating when I was 21, and he just turned 20. He was a virgin when he met me, and I only had one other person who was my ex-boyfriend of four years throughout high school. This caused a lot of problems. The first year of our relationship, and we almost did not continue dating because of how insecure he felt. After that first year, it was never a problem again until now, I guess. He went to his mom about this, thinking that she would convince me, but she's on my side. So two nights ago, Ryan, his mom, and I stood in our living room and argued about my sex life being shown in a dress. His mom stated that he is no longer a virgin either, so maybe he should wear red too, and he bursted out crying. Ryan is still stating that me wearing white would be deceiving all of the guests and that it's different for guys. This all has honestly made me question even marrying this man. I don't know if it's just because everything is so fresh, but I'm really disgusted with him. He's not even religious, so I know this is just about him still thinking about me losing my virginity at 18 before I even knew him. I just needed to rant anyone about how cycle this is. Run. Oh my gosh. How insecure do you have to be 
about that. Like, yeah, obviously she has life before you met her. If that was going to be a huge issue, it sounds like it was and they got over it. Like, he shouldn't have got over it. Like, if he's going to be that little of a person, then break up and move on and, like, leave her in peace. Do her a favor and leave her alone because you're a piece of shit. Uh, But, yeah, just leave her alone. Who the hell is not going to wear white on a wedding day? I've never seen anybody not wear white. I know Chinese culture, like, after the ceremony, you wear red at the reception. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, they're usually wearing a white wedding dress. They're just wearing um, a red dress after the ceremony for the reception. They don't give up the red. I mean, the white. I'm not too sure about other cultures. Yeah, but... I'm not too sure. But but generally, you, you you wear white. And this dude's not even religious. This is all just about, like, you've had sex. He's insecure. So have you, bro. Yeah. You know what? You know what's a good way to solve this problem? What? Stop having sex with him. Yeah, but... It... Also, leave him. Uh, yeah, leave him no, because at that point, if you're, like, withdrawing sex for this reason, like... Your relationship's doomed. No, exactly. It sounds like it is. Like, and he broke down crying. Yeah, he sounds like a little pussy ass bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does. Like, like he, he sat down crying over a death. You're you're deceiving our guests. Like, or our guests are expecting her to be in white. Yeah, all the guests are going to be expecting her to be in white. I would be like, dude, who the fuck are you hanging around at work? Who are your coworkers, man? That is some sketchy ass shit. If they're convincing you that somebody needs to be wearing red. I don't know if it's like people that he's around. I think it's honestly just his insecurity because he's had this issue with her since they started dating. But he's not even religious. So like, where do you get the idea that you only wear white because you're a virgin because you're pure? I fucking hate that. He wants to shame her. Yeah. Why are you marrying her if you want to shame her, dude? Like he honestly, I think he feels shame that he was a virgin and she wasn't. And boo hoo. Yeah, it's it's very misogynistic of him to huge think this way. And because obviously, yeah, women like sex just as much as men. Fucking reality check here. It's Literally. it's not just for men to enjoy. Yeah, if he has this this kind of um belief that he wants his partner to be pure and only be with one person being him. Um honestly, I would say Try to find someone else, but no, I would feel sorry a, for that other person. Yeah, because... no, he should just fuck off. He should just yeah. fuck right off. He should just marry himself. Yeah, marry himself because he's not pure anymore. Dude, she slept with one person who Literally, she's been in a relationship for four years. Even if she slept with hundreds. That's still fine. Fine. That's like, what she wants to do. If you don't like it, don't be in that relationship. Yeah. But don't bring this shit up years Why? later. It surprises me that this was an issue in the first year of them dating and they almost didn't get through it, but then they did. And it's been a while and there hasn't been any other issues in the relationship. I think if she like takes a step back and thinks about it, there's probably a lot of other red flags this dude is throwing out. I can't imagine that this would be the only red flag that this dude is throwing down. Yeah. He, yeah, he sounds like a misogynist. So I'm sure that there's There's other others issues. Yeah. Uh, But like we said, people show their red flags like later on into the relationship, Mm -hmm. kind of like baby Mm -hmm. trapping, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but marriage trapping. I don't know. So there's an update. Ooh. 16 months later. Oh, holy. This is my update one year later on the whole situation. I will start by saying I did not get married. Woo! <laughs> Ryan made that decision quite easy for me. I remember reading a comment that said I had true I had already been done with the relationship for me to move on so fast. That statement was very true. As much as I want to be the bigger person and not slander Ryan, he deserves it. Fuck Ryan. <laughs> I won't get into all of our issues, but there are some big ones that I would like to address. The absolute deal breaker for me had nothing to do with the red dress, but instead was all of his little lies that built up through our entire relationship. Ryan is very smart. I can't take that away from him. We actually met because even though I am a year older than him, he graduated a year before me. We had mutual classes. For someone so smart, he always got caught in dumb lies. As far as I know, he never cheated on me. That was something that I know a lot of people assumed, but even now, I don't believe it. There was never any big lie that caused massive drama, but rather a mountain of little white lies that always made me question why. He would lie to people about having allergies. He would lie about stopping for food before coming home. He would lie about losing weight. He is a healthy weight with a very normal build. He would just lie about so many things that did not matter. My issue with this is I had absolutely no trust in the man over literally nothing. I never held him back for doing things and he never asked permission to do things. 
So him going out of his way to lie about meaningless things made me start to resent him. I do not think he ever talked to his coworker about the dress. I think that was another lie. After telling him I did not want to be together anymore, I asked him about everything that happened surrounding the wedding. I got no real answers out of him and till this day, I have no real closure. My best assumption is that he got sucked into a misogynistic forums surrounding purity and made up a story to bring it up to me. Our breakup was pretty nasty since he talked about me a lot online. For the most part, I had support. No one ever reached out to me or threatened me, but it's still annoying having my feed filled with rumors I cheated and broke up our engagement over nothing. There was a lot of name calling as well. Apparently, I'm ran through. I'm fat. I let go. I let myself go. I look miserable without him. Eventually, he stopped on his own and I never acknowledged any of it. Even with the internet harassment, he never really fought to save our engagement. I was actually hurt by how he seemed equally as ready to part ways. We have no contact with each other at all, but I do know that last month he actually got engaged again. All I know about this girl is that she's 23, a hardcore Catholic, and actually looks very sweet. For her sake, I hope they work out. I do not still talk to Ryan's mom. Sorry to disappoint. She was very kind to me through everything, but for me to continue talking to her would be a bit weird. I still am happy to get birthday texts and a Merry Christmas. I did have a date two weeks after I called off my engagement. That didn't go anywhere and it was never meant to be. For me, the date was just to see if I felt any guilt for moving on, which I had none. I had a huge career change two months ago and now living in Philadelphia, far away from all the drama. I'm happy with where I am at and he seems happy with his life. I don't think I'll ever have to interact with him again. Wow, finally, happy ending. Yeah. Get away from him. And he found out a hardcore Catholic, she's probably a virgin, and man, fuck him. Poor That's girl. probably what he wants. Pro and, girl. Yeah, poor like, girl. Like, what's the point of shaming your spouse about a wedding dress? Like, just don't marry her. Just move on on your own. Like, it's not shaming her about the wedding dress. It's, it's shaming her about With the wedding dress, I mean. Sex. Yeah. yeah. With the wedding dress. Slept with one person. Ridiculous. Fuck Ryan. And then he goes on and, like, like talk shit about her on social media just showing what his true colors are yeah they always leave it to somebody who after they're sour they go to the internet and talk shit on people when they couldn't she dodged a bullet she did dodge a bullet big bullet she saw the red flags and she ran if you want a white wedding dress and your fiance is trying to convince you to wear a red one that's a bright red flag (laughs) (laughs) run (laughs) all right moving along This one's coming from Relationship Advice. My boyfriend thinks that my dad's gifts are creepy. Every year for Valentine's Day, my dad, 59 male, gives slash sends me, 23 female, flowers and a box of chocolate. He has done this every year since I've been old enough to remember. He always gives them to me when I was little. So when I went to college and beyond, he has had them delivered to me. It's just a tradition for us now. And I think it's very sweet. I grew up in a really tight-knit, close family. Well, I started dating my boyfriend, Mark, 25 male, a little over a year ago. Last Valentine's Day, I got the usual delivery from my dad. Mark saw and said, oh, your dad sent you those? Oh, okay. And that was it. Fast forward to this year. Last night, Mark and I were discussing our Valentine's Day plans for this year, like what restaurant we should go to, and he made a passing comment about hoping I don't get any creepy gifts in the mail this year. I was confused, and I asked him what he meant. He said, you know how you got that stuff from your dad last year? It's creepy for a dad to be sending his adult daughter Valentine's Day gifts. I was taken aback. It's not like my dad sent me lingerie or something. It was just flowers and some chocolate. I tried to explain to Mark that this is a tradition I have always shared with my dad. He stands firm that it is creepy and weird, and he said that his friends thought it was weird too. I tried to let it go, but this has been bothering me. Like, one, I have never heard these kinds of negative comments from Mark before, and I'm not sure whether or not this should be a red flag. I have never been in a serious relationship before, and I'm still trying to figure it out. Number two, when my dad's delivery comes this month, I don't want Mark to feel uncomfortable. Number three, is it actually creepy for my dad to be sending this stuff? I have never found it so, but would like to hear some other perspectives. Thanks. She sees the red flags and she needs to freaking run. Yep. Time to act on your red flags because they are red flags that you are seeing. I think that is an amazing effort that dad is putting in. 
he is showing her how a man should treat her. Exactly. And there's it's nothing so wrong sweet. with that. No, it's so sweet. So sweet. Yeah. I love dads who do that, who pride in their daughter's like happiness and like making them happy like that because it, it really shows women know, to know their worth. Exactly. Never settle. And he is setting the bar. And mm -hmm. if Mark isn't getting her flowers and chocolates now she knows this is what people should be doing for me who love me yeah and if you're not doing that you're coming up short exactly so the bar has been set and there's nothing creepy or wrong with that it's actually amazing yeah it's i think it's so nice and if he sees it any other way like drop him leave He's him messed up yeah. yeah if he can't get over that that's, that's a red so flag. weird to be thinking that they're creepy gifts yeah like why is he automatically going to like creepy like exactly. his dad? Oh, I, I don't even want to like know what he's thinking, but it's it's weird. It's freaking weird. Yeah. Top comment. I do the same for my adult daughters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like. It, nothing that's not normal. Yeah, it's not. It's really common. Exactly. It's very sweet, too. Next comment was. Maybe he feels forced to do more than he wants to and compete mm. with your dad or whatever. Don't change your tradition with your dad. It's sweet and great proof of your good bond. It's not creepy at all. No, not at all. Nope. Like, why would anyone think flowers and chocolate is creepy? Because like, it's like a Valentine's Day gift. Yeah, it's so sweet. Because he's a small man. He's a small man. He's a small man. I like that. That's we're going to start calling people small men. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Jacked has clocked in at the Biscuit Factory. Now, when we were renovating our den here and making our podcast studio, we had to come up with a way for Jack to, you know, have a seat because he always liked to sit on the couch and be cuddled. But now we have two chairs and we don't have a couch. So I built him this little cat shelf. So if you guys are on Spotify, you want to check it out, just make sure you guys hit us up on our YouTube channel for the full video version of this podcast. All right, moving along. My next one is from Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for not sharing a free meal with my anti-Instagram boyfriend? I post my food pics from when I go out to eat on Instagram. It's just for fun. I spend like 30 minutes a week on it tops. My boyfriend is a very sweet guy in many ways, but one thing that I'm not so much a fan of is he will often hop on a bandwagon of hating on innocent things. Not just not liking something, but making sure everyone knows he doesn't like it, even if nobody asked. I can't help but notice a theme. Pumpkin spice lattes, pouty selfies, Taylor Swift, etc. As you can guess, he is not a fan of the food pics and thinks it's very annoying and cringe. He doesn't even follow my Instagram, even though he has an account. Sad face. Even though I don't have very many followers... I have started getting occasional offers and invitations from restaurants in my city to try food for free in exchange for a review. Nothing crazy, no steak dinners so far, but I've gotten a few sandwiches and several baked goods. Well, I just hit the big leagues and got invited to a new restaurant opening that includes a free appetizer and an entree for me and one guest. I immediately invited one of my Instagram friends who I have gone out to eat with on several occasions and who also enjoys taking food photos. I told my boyfriend and he's pissed that I'm not taking him and says I'm doing it out of spite. I really think I'm not. If the restaurant is giving me free food in exchange for a post, I'm going to put more effort into the post and spend a few more extra minutes making sure that I actually get very good shots. And I'd rather do it with someone who isn't going to sigh and roll their eyes through the whole thing. Also, I think it's pretty audacious for him to be actively unsupportive of an activity that hurts no one but then also expects to benefit when it's actually successful. Am I the asshole? No, I mean, that is absolute karma. Like if you want to be a dickhead and you want to not even follow my Instagram account yeah. and then my Instagram account gets me a free meal. Listen, I don't want to disturb you. This is not up your alley. And I know 
that with free meal, I got to be paying more attention to this. I got to make sure I'm going to take some time. I'm not going to eat the food right away. It's just going to piss you off. Why would I bring you there? I mean, I would be thinking, why am I even dating you? But let's not get that far. Why would I bring you there if you are not going to have a good time? Because I'm basically working. So I'm going to bring another person who's doing a similar thing like this. What I do, they can benefit from it. Finally getting successful. So yeah, maybe if you were supportive, you didn't complain. You didn't say rude shit. You followed my Instagram. You liked and shared my stuff. You supported me. Then I would absolutely be like, yeah, I want to bring you to the restaurant for my free meal. I want to be with you. But she obviously has rights to not feel like that because he's being a fucking asshole. Yeah, exactly. No, 100%. And honestly, I would go as far as to say I don't even want to be dating you. Yeah. Because it is a huge red flag. That's a huge red flag because like this is something that I'm interested in. Like you don't have to love it. But if you hate it and I do it, maybe we're not the right people for each other. Maybe I'm not. This is not right. No. And it seems like he's really hating on things that make people happy pumpkin spice lattes and that's a red flag that's a red flag in itself that he has to tear everybody else's building down instead of building his building up yeah it's very insecure like he's it's being like very insecure it's so weird it's it's always so weird to me when people like try to be go against the green and kind of like do do things that like most people don't like you know like a lot of people like taylor swift so a lot of people think like oh i hate taylor swift that makes me different yeah there's nothing wrong with not liking something because you don't like it but there is something wrong with hating on something because other people like it exactly let them do them and you do you and you be happy with your things she could easily easily talk shit on all the things that you like bro yeah yeah and you need to be a little supportive like listen i'm not a swifty I don't love Taylor Swift, but I sat through Taylor Swift era's tour for three and a half hours last night on Disney Plus instead of playing Paul of Duty in the corner. I sat and laid on the couch with Teresa because Teresa loves Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. <laughs> I like like Taylor Swift. You know, she's actually not that bad. Some of her songs are bangers. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Which one? look what you made me do? I, I know, know that was names, a good one, but I just know when they're <laughs> they're on, and I'm just like, yeah, getting pumped in the car and stuff like that. But I, I don't know the names of them. Yeah. Sometimes I can sing along. Couple- I'm gonna I'm gonna say a quote from Taylor Swift that it applies to this. Oh, I don't think you should ever have to apologize for excitement just because something's cliche doesn't mean it's not awesome. The worst kind of person is someone who makes someone feel bad, dumb, or stupid for being excited about something. Wait, is that I a quote love- or lyrics? Quote. Oh, she okay. said this before. Yeah, yeah, no, spot on. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yay, Taylor. <laughs> no, and it's so true. Like, why do you have to make someone like bring them down when they're excited about? Yeah, something? it's just it. You're a negative energy person. Yeah. I honestly believe that there is two kinds of mailmen in your life. Mailmen. Mailmen. Yep. Like mailmen. Mailmen. Okay. People that bring mail to your mailbox. Okay. Okay. There's, you're gonna have two p- different mailmen in your life okay one of them is going to bring you positive news one of them is going to bring you negative news the mailman that you like and build a relationship with and give him the coffee in the morning he's going to deliver more of that news to you Hmm. so if you're always spitting out negative stuff and negative vibes you say negative things you're going to think of more negative things and your whole life is only going to be focusing on the negative things but if you feed that positive mailman, give him a snack, give him a cookie, give him a free bottle of water. Thank you for the mail, mailman. Thank you for the positive mail. And you focus on the positive things. Your brain will start noticing the positive things in life and you will be a happier person. Mm-hmm. 100%. There used to be this uh, thing that I used to listen. It was uh, act enthusiastic and you'll be enthusiastic. I used to say that. If you repeat that when you're in a down mood, guarantee you can't be in a down mood anymore. It pumps you yeah. up. Act enthusiastic until you're th- enthusiastic. It like rhymes kind of. And you get you start laughing at yourself and it's funny and you get happy and you're positive. This person in the story is just such a negative Debbie Downer that you only focus on the negative things in life and you can't can't enjoy life like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like to focus on the positive things. Teresa, you know, she does focus on the negative things a little bit. Not like to any extent, but she goes through some it's periods. It's called anxiety. Yes, where I'm just like, let's focus on the positive things. Let's think of the positive things. And I help get her back into a better mood. 
you know, I'm, I'm helping her, you know, but you know, sometimes she gets affected by like a little wave of it and she, you know, go through this period. I'm like, why are you focusing on the negative things? Let's be happy. Let's be positive. But generally she is absolutely generally she is. I just mean like at some points, you know, we all go through those periods of ups and downs and stuff. Life's a roller coaster and negatives and positives and everything. Sometimes I go through them too. And mm-hmm. Teresa brings me out of it. But on the majority side, I like to think I like to live a positive life. Yeah, be you happy. Do. Focus we balance on the positive each other. Things. Yeah, exactly. I bring you down. <laughs> Keep me realistic, and I bring you up. <laughs> I bring you down to the negative stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. no I'm joking. It's like it's like we're in. Uh, maybe Chris will relate to this. Madison and Chris will relate. To this. We're in an airplane, and I keep trying to fly to the moon in the airplane. You're like, babe, this this is not a spacecraft. We need to stay at forty thousand feet. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> our relationship. You get way ahead of yourself, yeah. and I try to bring you back down to yeah. earth. <laughs> you bring me back down to reality. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, is there an update on that one or anything? Mm, there was no update, but let me check her her account. Op replies to a lot of comments she's very active Active in this op yeah yeah i'm not gonna go through all of them but i don't see an update okay so gonna assume they're still together this was posted two months ago all right well i hope she sorts that out because that dude is only gonna bring you down in every other situation unless he could short his sort his shit out Mm -hmm. hey listen i'm not saying dump him and cut him i'm saying you need to have a conversation with him and if you don't see change that you want to see in the next you know ongoing future and stuff reconsider your relationship before it's too late because it's not somebody you want to attach your anchor to for the rest Mm -hmm. of your life yeah well said it's not a boat that you want to be on it's not an airplane that you want to board okay enough with the metaphors (laughs) (laughs) all right moving along Am I the asshole for leaving my girlfriend while she was sick for my sister? I, 20 male, and my girlfriend, 20 female, have been together for about six months. She's great, and this is our first issue. My sister, Carla, who is 18 female, is in a rough situation right now. She is living with her girlfriend, Julie, 19 female in a one bedroom apartment in an infamously dangerous place. She barely makes enough to survive and has little to no money for extra spending. This will be relevant later. My girlfriend recently came down with a stomach bug. First day, she texts me that she's sick and how she's miserable. I say, I'm sorry, and I comfort her a little over text. Then I get a bunch of scolding messages from her friends for not going to her house and taking care of her immediately, even skipping classes to be with her. Honestly, I felt bad, but I didn't get the memo from the text. I figured if she needs anything, she'll let me know. She's got it covered. Maybe I'll door dash her some food later and leave it at that. I really didn't want to get sick, but decided to go take care of her anyways. Everything was well until I get a call from Carla late in the night while my girlfriend was asleep. Carla told me she walked into the apartment to find Julie had thrown all of her stuff out and put a note on her suitcase saying they were done. No reason whatsoever. Carla was inconsolable. We call our other brother and he says Carla can stay with him, but he can't pick her up because he's home alone with his newborn baby. Carla doesn't have a car, no money for an Uber, and an infinitely dangerous area. Also, she lives 20 minutes away. It would be 3 hours and 30 minutes drive each way to my brother's. So I leave a note for my girlfriend telling her I'll be back soon. It's 4 a.m. at this point, and I also text her. I tried to wake her up, but she was dead asleep. So I go, pick up my sister, bring her to my brother's, and get her all situated. I ended up being back at my girlfriend's around noon. I tried to call her at 10 a.m. as well, but with no answer. I go in and she is crying and is mad at me. She yells at me that how dare I leave her when she isn't feeling good and that I wasn't prioritizing her. I said I understand how she felt and I tried to explain the situation. She just continued to say that nobody should be more important than my girlfriend and that I really don't even care about her. I asked her what she would have liked me to do and she said she would have liked me to Venmo Carla money so she can get an Uber herself. I agreed that was a possibility and my mind was all over the place. She's still mad and her friends have also told me that I'm an asshole. And if their boyfriends left them when they were sick, they would break up with them. I really didn't think what I did was wrong. But now that everybody's mentioning all these ulterior options, I feel like I could be the asshole. Am I the asshole though? No. (laughs) 
No, because she could have, like, they didn't have plants. I I can see like the Uber being a better alternative if it was like an event that they were at. So I just feel like she's just sick. She doesn't really need anything right now. Obviously, the more pressing issue was his sister. Yeah. Like you were just sick. Yeah. It's not like, like, I don't know. Like I can see like the alter, the alternatives being um, reasonable ideas in different situations but what what was he gonna do for you just like rub your back maybe give you a foot massage like like literally what do you need i don't i don't see them being acceptable what the uh, other options calling an uber for his sister at 4 a.m when she just got kicked out with all of her stuff you can't call an uber and I'm pack your whole if, like, house into it worst case scenario if he was like busy if it was like i don't know like i would her be... graduation or something like i'm just thinking like like literally like uh, it would have to be very significant because if madison or cat needed something in the middle of the night at 4 a.m yeah i i would drop anything and i would go i would call into sick work the next day there is yeah not anything that i can think about that i wouldn't drop to okay, help that's a fair. sibling in need i can't think of anything even if it was your graduation no offense to you but if like if my sister like said she is in dire emergency like needs help like got in a car accident or something like that i like, know okay but I, she didn't yeah, though. but it could um, it was she was kicked out of her house at 2 3 a.m so that is almost the same thing you're dead at night in a dangerous situation but if it was like another time like there is not much that i wouldn't prioritize my family my siblings over and i feel like you would be understanding of that yes i would I, be, I, I would have to but... i can't think of anything that would make it not a priority I would not, I would not, uh, an Uber is not even an option because like she has all of her stuff with her. Like, listen, if she was like drunk coming out from the club. Okay. Yeah. I don't need to go give you a ride. I'll call you an Uber. Mm -hmm. You're broke. You have no money and you need a ride. Okay. No problem. I can call you an Uber, but you got kicked out. All of your shit is on the floor outside of a house, an apartment building or something like that. Yeah. You need more than an Uber. You need hands. You need help. Yeah drive you to the brothers and everything like that if it's just like listen i need to get away from my girlfriend and you know can you pay for my uber like oh yeah okay no problem get an uber whatever but she got kicked out her stuff is all over the place this is necessary for you to go and help this chick is, that is fair. psycho yeah that's fair six months in first off i wouldn't even want to come see you I wouldn't want to guess. Yeah, I know. I actually have a similar story, but that's funny. Yeah. Like there was the time when you kissed me when you were sick and I regretted ever kissing you. I didn't kiss you again when you were sick for like three years. Not until we started living together. Yeah. Like at one point you're like, oh, I'm sick. I'm like, don't come to Barry. Stay home. No, because Denver said, you literally begged me. You were like, no, come over. Come over. I don't get sick. I don't get sick. And then you freaking regretted it. Yeah, I was starting to get old. (laughs) So my immune system wasn't as good. Yeah, totally. And I regretted it. And then ever since then, it was no. You were like 23. I know, but I wasn't like, I used to not get sick. And then I started dating all these old things keep happening to me. But in this situation, it sounds like her and all of her friends are kind of like, I don't know if, if this is the right term, but like pick me girls. But like, kind of like, it needs to be me, me, me. You're my boyfriend for six months, but you need to act like we're married or actually act worse than you're married mm. and stuff. Like everything needs to be about me. And like, how dare you have a family emergency at 4 a.m. where you had yeah. to leave? Like, no, that's she has wild. no respect for your family or anything. No. Oh, there's other options. You didn't have to leave me. And no. Oh, you didn't come over right away. There's nothing wrong with her being a little bit hurt and being like, oh, I, you know, my, my boyfriend, I thought you were going to come take care of me. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong for having that expectation. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. Communicating it. And there's, But there's also nothing wrong on his part no. for wanting to stay away because you're yeah. sick and doesn't want to get sick. 100%. And if you, as the girlfriend, can't understand why he wants to stay away, yeah. maybe he's not the right person for you. Yeah. Maybe you need somebody who is willing to drop everything for you, who is a layover and is just willing to do whatever it is you want. That's the type of relationship that you need. Mm. But this dude did nothing wrong. No, I'm- he definitely did not do anything. I just want to clarify that. I was just saying I, I do see the alternatives i don't okay now that you mentioned like with all the stuff and i do think like uber is a good alternative but like not if you're like depending on the situation stuff yeah yeah like if 
if my sister called me and she's like, oh, I'm wasted, you know, I can't, yeah, you know, whatever, I don't have any money, I'll be like, okay, no problem, I'll call you an yeah. Uber, I'll, yeah. I'll e-transfer you. But if she called me and she, even if she was like, oh, like I'm wasted, like I, I don't, I'm in the middle of nowhere, there's no Ubers, there's no taxis, like oh, yeah, it, how it's can so you say far, no? I would go. Yeah. If Uber is not an option, like 100%. whatever, something happened like that. But yeah, Uber was not an, an option in this this case. Yeah, yeah. In this situation. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, <laughs> see what I'm saying? I, so family's I, important. Yes. You drop everything for family. Yes, and I just want to be clear. I saw it before too. I just, I was saying I don't think if it was you a saw different it. I scenario. I don't think you saw it. And that's concerning to me because that's a red flag. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to get shredded in the comments. I I hundred percent agree that he did the right thing. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to see the other side here. Mm. And Uber can usually solve most problems. Most, I would agree. I yes. would agree with that. Like, listen, if you're if you're my sibling and you call me at three a.m. because you're drunk at a bar, yeah. Or you different. and your boyfriend got in a fight. Or you and your girlfriend got in a fight, and you just have to leave. But you're broke. Oh, let me call you an Uber. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this was past Uber. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am I making you concerned? <laughs> I'm worried over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Let's move on to more red flags. <laughs> let's get into some more red flags. This one comes from Am I Wrong? <laughs> I'm going to laugh at the title. <laughs> Am I wrong for staying overnight at a hotel because my boyfriend farted on me? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds absolutely insane and it's very humiliating for me, but I need to know if I'm overreacting or not. I, female 24, work at a hotel. For context, it has been offered to staff. If there are rooms available, then we could book ourselves into those rooms for the night. It's mostly done for practicality instead of luxury. And so it is done on a complimentary basis. Mainly it's the staff who have a very early morning shift who will do this, and I have never done this up until now. Monday was Mark, my boyfriend's birthday, male 25. He didn't want to have his birthday party somewhere busy, so I booked the private dining room in the hotel I work at for a discounted price. It was a three-course meal with Mark's family and a few of his friends. Everything was going fine, but in between the main course and desserts, Mark, who was sitting beside me, simply stood up with his back to me and literally farted in my face. I was shocked and I still am. I know he meant to do it because he was laughing and proceeded to mimic running away as he went back to the bar area to get more drinks. It was a loud fart and I was in the middle of talking to his aunt when he did it. Literally everyone in the surrounding vicinity heard and saw exactly what happened. I'm a timid person so at the time... All I did was stand up and remove myself from the blast zone. I was stunned, had no idea what to say, and was just trying not to cry from utter embarrassment. I tried to fall back into conversation and act like that didn't just happen, but I knew I was going to cry, so I excused myself to the bathroom. After crying in the bathroom, I still didn't really feel ready to rejoin the celebrations. I walked a lap of the hotel while I tried to compose myself when I passed my boss. I must have looked like shit because he looked concerned and asked if I was okay. I said that I just felt a bit sick. He said I can always check with the front desk and book into an available room if I needed to lay down and rest. I checked and thankfully there was a room. Before I left, I went over to Mark, who was at the bar area as dinner was over by now, and told him I didn't feel well and I would be upstairs. Fast forward to maybe four hours later and Mark texts me asking if he can come over, presuming I was home. I told him that I was at the hotel in a room for the night. I could tell he was annoyed and we bickered about everything that happened for a while until he stopped replying. Today, I received a text from Mark, his mother, and his best friend, all of which saying, Mark shouldn't have farted on me, but I'm being petty for not telling him about the free hotel room I had and that I'm making this a bigger deal by trying to punish him, aka by not inviting him up to the room with me. Am I wrong? No. And I think the biggest red flag here isn't even the fact that he is a p disgusting piece of shit that fired in your face in a public setting in front of all the other people. I think the biggest red flag that I'm seeing is that you're getting texts from his family yeah. sticking up for him saying you're blowing it out of proportion. That is the biggest red flag is when 
the family feels so comfortable that they need to text you in support of the mm-hmm. son mm-hmm. and reinforce everything he's saying. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Don't message my phone. This is not your relationship. Leave me the hell alone. Even for him to feel like comfortable enough to like share their problems. Yeah. Like I never share with my family like when we're fighting or no, something. You know I would what I never. mean? Like that's our business. That's our business. Hundred percent. That's our business. Yeah. We get in fights all the time. Yeah. Okay. Twenty four seven. <laughs> no, I'm joking on that one. But like, I would never. I never share our fights with anybody. Like, yeah. I would never. There's do no that. need. It's it's for us to sort out. To sort out. Yeah. It's not anyone else's business. It's our business. But yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, First but also, off, yeah, he's I would disgusting. I would leave Mark on the basis of he's disgusting. You. Why would you fart in someone's face in on purpose? Public? on purpose in front of everyone while while she's having a conversation with your aunt that's not you're somebody, a fucking weirdo yeah that's not somebody you want to be attached to yeah what are the embarrassing things always do in public yeah next thing you know he'll be at a carnival shitting in the grass because he thinks it's okay at a carnival <laughs> what? the line for the washroom was too long so he shit beside the porta potties oh <laughs> this is mark this is what mark We're will assuming do things about mark now this is what- <laughs> This is what Mark will do. But yeah, the biggest red flag for me is the fact that he told his family and then the family starts texting me. I don't need to go up into a longer relationship with you and have your mom text you every time we get in a little yeah, micro fight. Every time we get into a disagreement. I know, exactly. And fuck you. You didn't have any rights to the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck Mark. Fuck Mark. Top Jesus. comment. I was pregnant, exhausted, making him supper after work at midnight. I laid on the couch and he came over, sat down on my head and farted. We did get divorced in the end. He's showing you who he is. Believe him. Oh, my God. If I was that pregnant lady, I'd be like, "Ah, so funny, honey. Let me. I'm still laughing. Let me put my hands on your shoulders. Ah." Knee right to the balls as hard as you can. Drop him. Drop him. <laughs> I would drop him. I would drop Mark too. I would have walked over the bar after him, I kicked him right in the fucking balls and went up to the hotel room. <laughs> I'm too stunned to speak. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, ladies, ladies, if your man out there thinks it's okay to fart in your face, that's fucked. Knee him in the balls. Be like, oh, I thought that's okay. Ha ha. Yeah. It's funny. Honestly, it's You warranted. think farting in my face is funny? I'm going to fucking kick you in the balls. We're turning to violence. I'm a violent person. No, <laughs> not really. This this farting story reminds me of you. Stop. Stop throwing me under the bus. Teresa what are you talking cannot about? cannot handle if I fart on her. You've never farted on me. What are you talking about? Teresa cannot oh, handle if fart I fart on, on the couch three you, inches away from her. You do. I can't I'm let. I'm not supposed you. to let the couch vibrate. When I'm snuggling you, I want to be warned if you need to fart. Yes, you have to That's be. That's polite. I didn't, but like, I didn't realize that if I was sitting beside you. No, that's not what happened. And the couch vibrates. You're gaslighting me now. Have you not said, I felt the vibration? No. You have <laughs> yelled at me and said, oh, I felt the vibration. <laughs> so don't fucking gaslight me. You're laughing because you know you have. Yes, but that, I feel the vibration because my leg is so close to your asshole. Uh huh. That it vibrates. Okay, but I would like to clarify that my butthole was not lined up on you. <laughs> so that I should have had free reign to let my fart go. But that was a big deal. Okay. And Teresa all the time, she's small spoon. She gives me warning seven times a night. I got to put the blanket in between us. <laughs> but for some reason, I don't know. Whenever she's like forces herself to be big spoon and I'm this little spoon, I feel like there's instant need that like all of a sudden I didn't need to fart. But now that I'm small spoon, I need to fart. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> It's like every single time. I think we're oversharing now. No, nothing wrong with sharing some fart stories. <laughs> well, I'm uncomfortable, so I can assume our listeners are oh, also uncomfortable. You know what story? No, we, please. No, no, no. What story we need to find. I remember listening to a Reddit story a long time ago, but the girl, she farted in the bed, then she shit herself. Oh, I think I've heard that one. And that was within like the first month of dating this yeah. guy and stuff. Oh, I've heard that one. It's embarrassing. That is the shart. Maybe I'll have to find that for a future episode. But, oh, that would be embarrassing. Not the shart. Oh, God. Okay, let's move along. Let's move on. <laughs> I have a story. Uh-huh. Doesn't involve farting. Okay, good. It involves boobs. All right. That's All fine. All right. <laughs> I used to work at a restaurant and my boyfriend saw a pic of me in my uniform and now he is really pissed. But, like, why? 
For when I, female, 24, was 18 to 21, I worked in one of those chain restaurants slash bars that have their waitresses wearing very little clothing. I was a broke nursing student and it paid the bills and a little bit more. I left when I graduated, obviously. My boyfriend, male, 28, and I have been dating for about eight months. And the relationship is relatively new, but also long enough that we're comfortable with each other. Well, this weekend, I guess one of his friends saw a pic of me hanging on the wall at this restaurant. The pic is of me and a few other girls with a kind of famous baseball player who happened to come in. The owner recognized him. I hardly remember that day as he wasn't even my table. I just happened to be around when the pic was taken. I was probably 19 in the photo. When my boyfriend receives this text pic, he was so mad. He told me it's so embarrassing for his friends to see that, and I should have told him. I told him that I don't often think about this obscure photo of me hanging on a wall from five years ago. He was still so adamant that I disrespected our relationship. Like, am I missing something? I did not put the picture up, nor did I even remember it was there. I'm clearly just barely a legal adult in it, and I don't even remember it until it was brought up again. Like, geez, what happened? Is he just embarrassed about the uniform, or is it something else? Does anyone even know? Because I'm at a loss. I know what it is. It's called misogyny. Yep. And you should be asking... Why are you embarrassed for your friends to see this photo? Exactly. What is so embarrassing about it? I had a job. I was making money. What is so embarrassing about it? Like, really? Like, you need to ask him that question and see what he says, because that is so concerning to have a mindset like that. Yeah. What's embarrassing you about it? There's nothing embarrassing about it. What? Like, literally, what is embarrassing? Like, we, okay. Men are allowed to walk around shirtless, literally outside, in public, at the beach, whatever. Well, but, technically women are too. Legally. Legally. But society doesn't let us. No. Nope. Western societal norms is it's okay for a guy to have a shirt off. Yes. So why can't we... Why is us wearing a little bit less clothing so taboo? Yeah, you know what? You know what? You know what's interesting? Why do you have friends that went to that restaurant? Exactly. Yeah, you know, how about that? Why why are you as a oh. guy? Why are you going to eat at a restaurant where the boobs are out? You're asking the right questions. Hmm. Yeah. That's a red flag, these friends that you have. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you're right. If you like there's nothing wrong, obviously, with going to these restaurants, but if you're gonna shame the women that work there, there is something wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody it's a it's a win win for the people that go there. Yeah. Women are comfortable with it and they do it and they make more money than at other places and the men get a show with their food. And it's it's hap- it's whatever. And also, this chick paid for herself to go through nursing school. She had all that stuff. She was independent. And that's her past. Listen, if you're in a relationship now and she wants to go sign up for that job and that's not something that you're comfortable with, you can have, you can say that. And if she still wants to do it, you can redecide if that's a relationship that you want to be mm-hmm. in. But this happened before you. You have no rights to disrespect her and say yeah. that she's disrespecting your relationship for something that happened before you met her. Exactly. I'm noticing a lot of the themes with the red flags is misogyny. Seems to be all men. Yeah. All the guys have these red flags. My next story is a girl. Good. (laughs) Nah. Uh, Let's see. Top comment on my story. Thanks for informing me of the term restaurant. Yeah. Never heard of that that one before. It must be a U.S. thing. Don't think we've ever had that in the culture in in Australia. Not even in Canada. I've never heard that. Yeah. I mean, I guess like Hooters restaurant yeah i mean i guess like the one where they roll yeah, hooters the, yeah but hooters would be one no but they're talking about the term restaurant yeah she didn't say the name of the rest well, it's not what the restaurant was called it was no just i know term. but the comment was saying yeah. thanks for introducing me to the term yeah he's from australia so yeah but yeah like hooters and stuff yeah jack where are you going baby poor guy he, like wants to be around us he doesn't know where he can go move it along all right Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend that my loyalties lie with my baby brother? My little brother recently moved in with me. It was a huge shock at first. My brother, Will, 17, is FTM. I think that's uh, female to male. I, male 34, had no idea he was trans or even questioning his gender. He always seemed perfectly happy as a girl. You know, he was very feminine presenting and all. Turns out he came out to our parents after getting his hair cut and they didn't take it well in the slightest. 
From what he's told me, he wasn't exactly kicked out. They just started being unbearable. They were calling him Myla in every sentence, they said, just to annoy him, I suppose. Mom kept booking him in for appointments to get hair extensions and his lashes done. Our dad didn't let him wear the male uniform and so on. It got so bad that he literally took a train from down south to up north to ask if he could live with me. Of course, I said yes. The house is big enough to have him live there. There are four bedrooms and an attic room. My girlfriend, Nico, 32, was irritated when she found out. We've discussed her moving in before Will came, and now she's telling me that she will not move in until Will leaves. I've explained to her that Will isn't a child we'd have to constantly supervise, that if anything, he's the one making the place more livable. He's very insistent on adding on to the home decor and so on, as well as being better than me at cleaning, and that the house is large enough to still have privacy even with him around. Nico's argued that it's not truly ours if Will is always there, that we won't be able to start trying to conceive, that she's not willing to live with a hormonal and rebellious teenager, and that she's just flat out uncomfortable with Will being around her and living with her and her son, male 10, in the same home. Ultimately, I've told her that my loyalties lie with my baby brother, who is homeless and vulnerable. Unlike the grown woman with a good paying job in a home of her own, she's called my mom up to be- complain about it. And she said that I was in the wrong for prioritizing Will. And Will himself said that he doesn't want to be causing problems in my relationship. So am I the asshole? No. And Will's not causing problems. Like, dude, I would do this for you. Like, don't think this is on you or anything. Like, this is not Will causing problems. Like, I'm going to, your family, I'm going to do what I need to do for family. Like, I have an extra room in my house. I have the availability. Absolutely. I have no problem with you moving in. I don't mind helping you out and taking care of you. Like, you are an adult. You're 17. Like, you're living pretty much by yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just giving you a roof to stay under. Yeah. And if the girlfriend has a problem with that, then the girlfriend has a problem with that. Dude wants to choose his brother over his girlfriend. He has full rights to do that. But he's not really choosing her brother, his brother over his girlfriend. I yeah, feel not, like... not exactly. Yeah. He is making her him more of a priority. He is. He is technically choosing because he, he the girlfriend said, I don't want this. I don't want him there. I want to move in with just myself. But and then he he's still like... said, it's my brother comes first. My brother's priority. He's choosing his brother. I guess, but I also feel like she's kind of giving him an ultimatum. Oh, she is. Which is shitty. Yeah, 100%. And he's not choosing her. What does she want him to do? Yeah, exactly. Where is he going to go? Exactly. Like, I just feel like stuff like this. And her son's moving in. Yeah, he's 10. Yeah. So, like, you're just assuming that he's going to be okay with that? Yeah. Well, I think think they already talked about that. Yeah, I know. But I just mean, like... I'll just read the top comment. Top comment, not the asshole. I love that you are protecting your brother. Have to say I'm rather confused that your girlfriend has a younger child to look after and expects you to welcome that child, but can extend the same to you and goes running to your unaccepting parents to make you toe the line. Yeah, that's the biggest thing is just going directly to my mom. Fuck off. Yeah, it's weird. It's like... Very weird. You're tattling. Tattletale. It's immature. She's 32. Literally. Like... You're acting like you're 12. You're tattling on your elementary school boyfriend, like that your boyfriend did something wrong. You know what I mean? Like, that's fucking weird. It is weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. It's not even like a cut and dry, like, run. It's just a red flag. I think it's a red flag for sure because... Maybe more of a yellow flag. Red flags are usually like, race is over, it's time to cut. Yellow flag is like, caution, warning. Okay, maybe maybe down rider, Down rider ahead caution but it's also like she doesn't have the mental like i agree your partner should always come first but i feel like when your family is in need and they literally have no other options like you can help and you can help you have to be accepting of that also not partner yet they're not married they're not living together she's just a girlfriend partner okay well I, I just feel like their relationship isn't at that level it's not like they're already living if they were living together and you know and he's and and he just let the brother stay there without even consulting her that would be an issue yeah but if he you know says my brother has nowhere else to go we have a spare bedroom it's his house yeah it's not her house it's no, his true. house yeah so yeah yeah mm, yellow flag fair 
Caution ahead, sir. <laughs> All right. Moving along? Yeah. Am I the asshole for having a cheeky slash thong bikinis on our honeymoon? I, 27 female, just went on my honeymoon with my new husband, 29 male. Honeymoon included a cruise and a stay at a resort. My husband and I have been together for three years, and we have only been swimming together a couple of times on the beach before. So he was pretty much unaware of the types of swimmer I go with, which is normally on the lower cleavage side, down to something that you would call a thong. To me, this is just normal. I even wore these types back in high school. So naturally, on our honeymoon, this is all I had. But my husband simply thinks it's too revealing. Am I the asshole? Should I have spoken to him about this? You already know my answer. I only own thong bikinis. Yeah. Only own thong bikinis. And for you to go on vacation with your husband, on your honeymoon with your husband, obviously you're going to assume that that's acceptable. Yeah. Like as a, as a husband, don't you want your wife looking hot as fuck? Yeah. It's it's so insecure. Like when men are like, I don't like you looking good in front of other people. It's like, okay, just tell me you're insecure. Yeah. It's weird. Do you trust me or not trust me? Yeah. Exactly. Like, I'd like to look good for myself. Thank you very much. Exactly. And if my booty looks good in a thong bikini, I'm going to wear a thong. Exactly. And they were dating for like three years and they've been swimming before. I'm sure they have. Yeah. Like, would you think she's going to start wearing onesies? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with onesies. Come on, but, bro. But like, yeah. Thongs are very flattering. Yeah. Why wouldn't you wear them? Yeah. Especially to your husband. Just sucks they had to find this out on your honeymoon. No, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Before. Were there, yeah, were there because any... This is going to bleed into other issues. Yeah. This is, a, like, starts with a bathing suit, but this bleeds into all clothes. Yeah. Hair, they makeup. Don't like, yeah. Bleeds into everything. It's going to bleed into who your friends are. Yeah, no, he will start controlling you and yeah, what you're 100%. wearing, what you're doing. And don't let him. It's going to bleed into everything. That is a red flag, but it's a little too late now. Yeah. Well, apparently you can get it annulled. Yeah, apparently you can get it on annulled at any point in the marriage. Yeah, but still, you're married now. It's it's a little late. Yeah. But yeah. Talk to him. Talk to him and ask him why it makes him uncomfortable. Yeah, ask him why he's got small man energy. Small dick energy? No, we're not doing that. Why? Because <laughs> that other story. The other oh, story yeah. that we read. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move along. Okay. Am I the asshole for deciding not to buy food for my fiance's family anymore? Every other week, my fiance, 22 female, and I, 23 male, go to eat with her family. And last week, we went to a Korean barbecue restaurant owned by my uncle, 59 male, where I paid for everyone's meal. I only asked them to cover the tip for the waitress, which they agreed to do so. The total bill was over $240 and I paid. Usually, when I cover the tab for my friends or significant other, they generously tip since they're only responsible for their gratuity, not for the cost of the meal itself. However, a few days ago, my cousin, 21 meal, revealed that they had left a $1 tip and they have tip only $1 before. I was shocked and disappointed because a $1 tip is insultingly low, especially considering I had treated them to alcohol and dessert. So I discuss this issue with my fiance, but her family insists that they never tip or only pay like $1 for tip at restaurants slash general services. This is happening in the U.S. As a result, I informed my fiance our biweekly restaurant outgoings will have to change. I told her that I had only paid for their meals as a kind gesture. While my fiance was annoyed, she ultimately understood. Yesterday, they asked if I would buy their food again next week. To which I responded that they'll need to cover their own expenses for their meal. I didn't want to confront them about their habit of tipping on the dollar. So I decided to handle it differently this time and simply pretend to cover the tip for them. Her family did not take it so well. They accused me of being ungrateful, arguing that they were the ones taking time to meet up with me bi-weekly and that asking them to tip was unreasonable in the beginning. They also suggested that since my family is wealthy, it's only fair that I continue paying for their meals. My fiance was surprisingly on my side. She knew her family had this issue. She just didn't have courage to inform them about it. Am I the asshole for deciding not to buy food for my fiance's family anymore? 
No, I'd never buy them anything ever again. Yeah. Oh my god, the entitlement from yeah. her family. Yeah, and honestly, a little bit from her. It's a little bit of a red flag that your fiance couldn't stand up. Yeah. And couldn't say anything. This shouldn't be on you to pay for your fiance's family. No. And like, bro, and they're expecting I'm it. Pretty sure this dude isn't asking to meet up with them fucking bi weekly. Yeah. They're like, we're doing you a favor. We're doing we're you a favor. You. We're giving you our presents. <laughs> bro, Please. I don't want to be around you. We should go like bi yearly. <laughs> You tip $1 on a $240 bill. Listen, if somebody covered the bill and they were like, hey, you get the tip, that's a $40, $50 tip I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, like I'm going to tip extra because I didn't have to tip. Wow. The audacity. The audacity. This is a little bit of a yellow flag. I would I would dial this down to a yellow flag on the fiance. It's a on the fiance, bit of a, yeah. A little I'm just bit thinking, of a warning. I, I red flag in. from that family law. Yeah. The family is, is a red flag. No more dinners. You're cut from dinners. Yeah. The f- oh, and then the fact that you ask for it yeah and you ask for it who the fuck do you think you are you ask for it what the entitlement is just beyond it's wild outrageous There's- yeah okay top comment quoting op arguing they were the ones taking time to meet up with me bi-weekly lol just reply i'm sorry i didn't realize it was such a burden for you Going forward, we could stop getting together bi-weekly then. I didn't realize you considered it such a sacrifice, and I can't in good conscience keep asking you to do so much of a sacrifice. You don't owe these people anything. They are trying to take advantage of you. Stop letting them try. Not the asshole. 100%. Don't let them. OP replies, I might actually use that. Thanks. Ooh, do it. So there's an update. Yes. I didn't break up with her, but her family is furious that I sent them the upvoted reply. Yeah. They refuse to talk to me. They've called my fiance multiple times saying things like, is this how Koreans do their business? And suggesting that she should break up along with other offensive and more racist remarks. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see they- this update. Damn. Info. Your fiance knew her family only left a dollar tip on $240 meal and she didn't put in the tip herself. Ooh, yeah. That's a red flag. Think carefully, OP. I'd be thinking extra carefully on this. Wait, did she know, though? I don't know. Sounds like she did. Suspicious. It's her family. I feel like she knows how they're tipping it. They're tipping That's true. Is. Oh, yeah. This whole family say... is a piece of shit. Yeah. Honestly, that makes that makes her yellow flag turn into a red flag. Her yellow flag has turned into a red flag because I would be questioning, like, how much interaction are we having with your family in the future? Yeah. Are you cutting your family? Because... I wouldn't want to see them outside of Christmas. Like, I'll give them once a year. Well, we can go to Christmas with them. Maybe Easter. But, like, I want reduced contact bi-weekly. Get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. It's just, like, the entitlement. It's, fo- yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Why do they always have to go out, too? Yeah. Oh, why can't they host them? Yeah. If, they're think- if they think that they're doing them such a favor. Yeah, you should host. Invite them over. Invite us over. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, these people are off their rockers. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. My boyfriend found a sexual photo of me and my ex. This is coming from True Off My Chest. My current boyfriend and I have been dating for three months, but I love him so much. And I know three months isn't a long time, but I truly believe he is my soulmate. And I have never felt so atta- so attached and connected to someone in such a short time. I want him in my life forever. What is this? What is this that you're doing? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, we'll talk about it later. You familiar? Yeah. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend and I broke up last year in June and haven't spoken since. I went through my pictures and deleted all of our photos together and the ones of just him, or so I thought. I'm very open with my current boyfriend and he knows about my ex, his name, and how we dated for years and the details of the breakup. I had told him the password for my phone multiple times and I let him on it because I have nothing to hide and there's no reason for me to not give my phone. When I was at his place, I left my phone and went to shower, as I usually do. He ended up going on it and scrolling through my Snapchat memories quite deeply and saw on those flashbacks that there was a sexual photo that I didn't even know that I had on there and if I did, I would have deleted it and among the other photos of us just hanging out. 
I completely understood and have told him I accept his feelings towards it and being upset is totally understandable and I have explained that I thought I deleted them all and I apologize for not doing a more intensive search, especially since the past relationship lasted for three years. Despite this, he has been completely shut off and is different with me. As since the sexual photo and handful of general ones, he assumes that I am not over my ex and I kept them on purpose even after explaining I didn't even know they were there and I am well over my ex and I would never intentionally keep anything to risk our relationship. He says he understands that I messed up but he's not sure if he can move past this and he can't look at me in the same way anymore which hurts me on a whole new level. As he was the only person I truly cared about and how I am viewed. He said he doesn't know how he will get over it, and if he doesn't, then the relationship is over. I just want advice or help in this situation. Anything I could possibly do, even after explaining and reassuring and understanding his feelings and understanding it is completely wrong and should have never happened. But I can't change it no matter how much I wish I could. I'm completely lost, and I don't want my ignorance or and stupidity to ruin my future with him because I am certain he is my soulmate and I will be lost and miserable without him in my life. It makes me sick to my stomach to think I will lose him over this. Girl. Girl. He was looking for a problem. Yeah. He was clearly looking for a problem. And the way she's talking about herself, I'm so stupid. Oh my God. I don't like that at all. I don't like the way she's talking about herself. You got this. Get some confidence. Yeah. Come on. Like, we're not talking about ourselves. We're not letting a man think that way of us. And we're not talking to ourselves because of freaking men. He was clearly looking through your phone, trying to find some ammo and starting a fight. Why? I don't know. Yeah. There's a difference between him going on your phone to check out the maps or yeah. check something out he was scrolling through your snapchat history yeah. being a snoopy little bitch who would ever think to go back in your snapchat and delete stuff from that that's a red flag that he was going through your stuff like we we share our phones yeah we've shared our phones very early on yeah like i'm pretty sure the very first day, i told Literally, you my password was within like, like yeah. the first date or something mm. It, like, was it was very early. Very on. fast. Yeah. Because that's not some I have nothing to hide. Teresa has something to hide. I have something to hide? Teresa has nothing to hide. <laughs> we both had nothing to hide. The passwords are there are not there to keep your partner out. They're there no. for like to me, the way that I see passwords is like anti theft. Like yeah. anybody that I know can know my phone password and they yeah. can know my cell phone password and stuff. And if you break that trust, then you break the relationship, the friendship or anything. But the fact that he's deep diving into all of your stuff is such a breach of privacy he's it's trying to find something he's wrong looking for it yeah he's a piece of shit yeah no it's like he wanted to start a fight i don't know why like i don't know what his mentality was but he found it he's insecure yeah he is insecure and like like i said like who would ever think like for him to expect that she would go in her snapchat memories and then delete it from her phone i would never think to do that me either who would think to do that? Like Snapchat is not like a source of like a camera yeah. for me. You know what I mean? Like way different. Red flag. He was searching through all that stuff. You gave him all the access and he completely abused it. Yeah. My first thing would be like, okay, that's my ex. That's from three years ago. I'm sorry I'm on it. But the bigger issue yeah. here is that I go into the shower and all you do is just snoop through my phone looking for something yeah. like, bro, that's a red flag. Now it's a little different if, if. He was just, he needed to use her phone for something. Yeah, he, but I don't he, think that's He the checked case. and like a flashback popped up, like a notification mm. popped up. It still actually would be a breach if he clicked on that notification. But like, mm. eh, that would be like somewhat reasonable if he's like, oh, I'm, I think that is I, reasonable. I'm curious. I'll flashback. Oh, I wonder what you looked like three years ago. Like, cute. Yeah, like, just, I'm just curious and stuff like that. And then it happened to be one. But no, he went deep diving in. Yeah. Looking for it. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. And it's only three months. Oh, my God. Yeah. She says he's my soulmate, the love of my life. Sounds familiar. 
What are you talking about? The, the, this, let me let me read the first. Yeah, I heard let it. The, let me re- read it one more time. Okay, no, we my current my it. current boyfriend and I have been dating for three months. I love him so much. I know three months isn't a long time, but I truly believe he is my soulmate, and I have never felt so attached and connected to someone in sort such a short time. I want him in my life forever. Okay, and now you're comparing that to me. That was 100 percent you. That was me. You said I love you within three months. Six months. It's basically three. I said I love you at six months. It's basically three. And that's normal. Eh. That is so normal. Bro, people move in together after six months. What are you talking about? Like, we have had this argument I wasn't for ready. six and a half freaking years. Yeah, we have. Denver thinks I said I love you too early on. Yep. And I said it at six freaking months. Early. And it was time. It mm-hmm. was freaking time. I was hesitant because I had been in a previous relationship. I think I knew it around eight to nine months, but I didn't say it until our one year anniversary. Matrice. Actually, technically I did when I was really drunk that one night for after yeah. Miranda's wedding. But then I said it again on her one year anniversary, but I don't know. So when Teresa first said she loved me, she did it at like 10, 11, maybe 12 o'clock at night. I was starting to fall asleep and Teresa was leaving and it was like, she like left the room, I think. And then, she no, came I, I think you left the room no, and then you came back no. like you were about to leave but then you like so no. you just had to say it no maybe you went to the washroom then came back no because the washroom was in touch my room i feel like you went to the kitchen or something and you, i don't know i just remember like falling asleep and it's like 10 11 o'clock at night i'm falling asleep and Teresa's about to go home and she's going home because i'm falling asleep and she's like wait i just i have to tell you something before i leave i i just want you to know that i love you I'm like half asleep, half groggy. I'm like, well, I, I really like you too, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm there yet. <laughs> you broke my heart. I was a red flag for Teresa <laughs> in that moment. Yeah, you were. Freaking! I hope you guys shred Denver in, in the comments because six months is not a short amount of time. Six months, in my opinion, is a long fucking time. Okay, that's fair. But I was just a little bit more cautious because I knew once I said I loved you, like, I'm like, what's the animal that's mates for life? I don't know. Uh, I guess that doesn't apply. It's not applicable because it wasn't weird. But I knew it once I loved you. I loved you. And that was it. Mm -hmm. I was going to be obsessed with you for the rest of my life. Mm. Okay. So there is an, um, there is an edit to this. I don't, I don't, I guess people are going off in the comments. Maybe. Yeah. uh, um, top comment. Why does everybody in here think it's normal for partners to be going through each other's phones aimlessly and unprovoked? I live with my girlfriend at two and a half years, but we both respect each other's privacy and digital spaces. We each know each other's phone codes just in case, but we never open it up for no reason and poke around. Yeah. I mean, like same with us. Like it's a little bit different because yeah. we're six years. We're like almost married. We're like engaged and we live together for a long time. Yeah. Like whoever's phone is closest to me. Is going to be the one that I need to, if I need to like oh, Google yeah. something or I'm, I need to check Instagram or I need to, like we have connect with, like not only do we have our each other's phones password, like we have all the same Instagram accounts on both phones. We have all the same in TikTok accounts, YouTube accounts on yeah. both of the same phones. It's like whichever phone is closer nearby and we need to look something up, that's yeah. the phone that gets used. Like this morning. Yeah. When I left my phone outside of the bedroom and I was like, can you pass me your phone? I need to scroll on TikTok. Like, exactly. Boom. Like yeah. that's exactly how it is. Laptops, everything, everything is our team. Yeah. It's ours. Exactly. <laughs> and if you don't do it that way, that's also fine. Yeah. Like they're like three months in. So yeah. it's a little bit different. The biggest issue here is that he was deep diving looking for issues. Yeah, exactly. Like he was snooping. We don't go through each other's stuff to snoop. No, like, like I don't go through and snoop. Yeah. I've never gone through and like looked at your texts or looked at your photos yeah. or like looked at anything. Yeah. I use your phone if I need a, a phone to use and that's it. Exactly. There is an update. Anybody who wants to call me a whore or whatever, it doesn't phase me. I don't know who the hell was attacking her in these comments, but shame on those people. What? But maybe it's good to know that he has 30 to 50 bodies. Meanwhile, I have three, which is including him from all of my relationships. So fuck everybody in the comments who was saying shit like that. I hate those people. Yeah. I have not seen anything on his phone. I don't even know his password, so I can't even snoop. But I don't even want to. I'd rather ask to look at it and not behind his back. That's a red flag. She has given him all access and he won't give her access. 
Yeah, that's... You need to stop being infatuated with he's this projecting. person and being so head over heels. He's projecting because he's you know what? He's clearly projecting. He knows what he's hiding on yeah. his phone and that's what he's looking for. Yeah. He's 100%. hiding some shit on his phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number no, Piazza. She needs to run. She needs to run. These are big glaring red flags. Red flags on top of a red flagpole. <laughs> uh, yeah. Moving on? Yeah, moving on. I have a short one here. Okay. I thought this was a red flag, but let me know. Oh, probably not. My 28 female husband, 30 male, picked his nose and ate it. Throw away account because I'm so embarrassed about this. This afternoon, I, 28 female, was looking out the window into the backyard and admiring my husband, 30 male, through the window. He has no idea I was watching him and he was just existing in the moment. There he was, standing in the yard, and he started casually picking his nose. I was prepared to give him a hard time about digging for gold, but then I watched in horror as he brought his finger to his mouth and he actually ate it. <laughs> My mind is racing and I'm unsure of how to confront him. How do I delicately address the situation without hurting his feelings? I'm embarrassed and disgusted and now I'm grossed out to kiss him. How do I even talk to him about this? How much do you love him? <laughs> Take it to your grave. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That is gross. Like, are you seven? Like, I stopped eating my boogers when I was like seven or something like that. What? <laughs> yeah, you I never a... ate my boogers. Never as a kid? No. It used to be the best thing. Ew. It was like juicy. <laughs> Please. Yeah. No, I, Please. I, when I was a kid, I used to do that, but then I stopped. I'm like, glad you did. Geez, that's gross. Yeah, I wouldn't want to kiss him either. There is an update. Oh, my God. My husband always says I'm dramatic, and it seems Reddit agrees. Ha ha. I was expecting to get a few phrases that I might use to talk with him. I was not expecting to find a bunch of booger-eating apologists in here. Jesus. <laughs> I still haven't talked to him because I'm busy having an existential crisis that everyone I know is probably eating their boogers in private. No. It's only... Is this a normal thing? No. Like... This can't be. Not everybody eats their boogers. Like... Or oh, there are only seven year olds on Reddit. Like what? <laughs> How do? You, what do you even say? Literally, that's not a red flag. Oh, I would confront you if that's, I saw you eating your buggers. I would call you out right away. That's just like a puking face emoji on a flag. <laughs> like it's not a green flag, but kind of is. It's a green flag because it's a booger. It's a vomity green flag. <laughs> oh my god! I would confront him. I would. I would, yeah. Maybe you could shame him into never doing it again. <laughs> yeah, make him feel awkward. Be like, when he comes in to kiss you, be like, like no, ah. no, booger breath. <laughs> no kisses for you, booger breath. Yeah, that's exactly what you should say. And then yeah. every time he goes to eat it, he'll think twice. And then it'll be like, what? Is anyone watching? <laughs> or even better, wait till the next time he's out on his own and film it. Ooh. And then when he comes in, be like, Honey, I need to show you something. <laughs> Boom. Call him out. Yeah. So funny. Put it in the family group chat. I just thought this was like lighthearted. That's 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 funny. All right, let's move along. This one is um a little NSFW, a little not safe for work, perhaps. So I kind of left this towards the end of the episode. This one is from two months ago. It's from True Off My Chest. My fiance just gave me the biggest ick, and I don't know how to act now. So I, female, 23, work night shifts full time as an LPN, midnight to 8 a.m. And I also go to school full time to become an RN. For those of you who don't know, nursing school is quite hard and I still have to work full time or almost full time in order to pay my bills. My fiance, 26 male, on the other hand, isn't really working right now. It's slow season and he usually does one to two days a week. He stays home and does most of the child care regarding my stepdaughter. He's supposed to do most of the chores, but somehow we still end up splitting it about 50-50. I worked the whole week and last night and didn't get much sleep because his daughter was supposed to go to her mom's but didn't, so she kept waking me up. Plus, he had friends over during the weekend, and our apartment is quite small, so there's no place to sleep away from the noises. Averaging three to five hours of sleep per day, it's safe to say that I wasn't really up for any extracurricular activities in the bedroom, so we didn't do anything all weekend. 
The morning, while I was in class, right after the worst shift of my life, he texted me and said, I'm in need for some physical lovin's. I was already not feeling it. I hadn't slept in 20 to 24 hours when I got home, so I was nauseous and exhausted. And he was pouting, so I told him I could put an alarm on for 3 p.m. so I would wake up and we could get at it before we went and get his daughter from school. He seemed okay with it and let me sleep for three hours. When my alarm rang, I felt like I was dying. I was so ready to just go back to sleep, but he immediately peeked his head through the bedroom door to see if I was awake and went to lay next to me. I was more nauseous than ever and really turned off, but he was looking at me with such insistence and I really didn't feel like having a fight about my lack of desire towards him, so I just let him do his thing. When he was done, he rolled over, told me he was drained and fell asleep. I can't fall back asleep, so I'm fighting the nausea and the tears, and I don't know what to do. I can't look at him without feeling like I'm going to throw up. I'm literally disgusted for her. I'm disgusted, too. That's disgusting. This man is disgusting. Not yeah. only can he not go to work and work full time and pay the bills, but he can't even take over the household chores when his partner is working like massive eight hour shifts and then going to school full time bro you're working eight hour shifts every day and going to school full, full time, time and i'm at home and doing i'm what? barely doing nothing i'm doing you i would be doing everything i'd be doing vacuum cleaning and laundry cooking i'd be fucking doing everything for you if you're working that much and i'm at home because i'm having a slow time like absolutely i'd be hustling and making stuff better for you but you're not doing anything and then you have the audacity to fr invite your piece of shit friends over to hang out while i'm barely getting any sleep and i'm going through all of this stuff and you can't even pick up after yourself and then you need to text me saying i need some physical love like disgusting no i'm literally disgusted like there's nothing else to say there's so many freaking red flags you need to leave him obviously like yeah. this is not this is the easiest one it's, it's disgusting it's disgusting honestly. like yeah there's no way you could look at him the same after that like he doesn't respect you he sees you as a human a fucking bag i don't know <laughs> fuck bag a fuck, fuck bag doll. a fuck doll he sees you like a fuck doll that's he doesn't see you as a human How can you have sex with somebody who's not into it that's so wild that's like so gross it's disgusting like yeah, i'm literally disgusted so gross top comment you truly have to set some boundaries. Don't have sex when you are not feeling well. It's your body. If he gets upset and starts an argument, then he might not be the person worth having in your life. Wanting and pushing to have sex with someone when they don't want to is not okay. No. Stand your ground and don't allow this behavior again. No, I no, like this wouldn't be this would be it for me. Like you're done. Like we're breaking up. Yep. Wait, so are they married or No, they were just dating. dating. Okay, break up. Oh, fiance, like I wouldn't even fiance. And the engagement. I yep. wouldn't even give it another chance. Like, yeah, this would literally give me the biggest ick. This is. Ooh, it's giving me the ick right now. So icky. Come on. Update. Oh. 24 hours later, we broke up. Good. Thank God. Thank God. Um, there's one other comment. It says uh, the boundary was set. There's um, a comment. On one of them says the boundary had been set multiple times prior to that day. The engagement is now off the table and he is moving out this weekend. Good. So he moved. He lived with her too. There's so many other red flags. Yeah, there's so I, many. They're screaming it, it, at her. Yeah. Even before it got there. Yeah. Wow. All right. I have my last story here. This one comes from r slash relationship advice. 27 female accused of baby trapping my 28 male fiance when my tubes are tied. I had an argument with my fiance this morning. We've been dating for two years, engaged since September, and for the most part, everything has been going well. We've been planning a quiet backyard ceremony so that we can save up for a house instead. We've been communicative and managed to get through fights in the past, but this takes the cake. He's been evasive for the past two weeks about the wedding or any future plans we've made, and I basically had to corner him this morning before leaving for work to ask him what's going on. Turns out, while he was dog-sitting for his uncle early in February, they had a chat that stuck with him. When they were talking about life and how things have been, 
His uncle admitted he resented his ex-wife for baby trapping him and now he's divorced while his ex-wife is dating again and my fiance's cousin is an entitled asshat who terrorized him when they were both teenagers. Turns out it's been sitting in his mind. He says he thinks I'm about to spring a pregnancy announcement on him and trap him into the marriage. This is despite the fact that he knows I don't want to have kids. I basically raised my siblings and lost out on my childhood. I told him about not wanting kids when we first started dating. We were both on the same page and I've asked him about getting a vasectomy in the past, which is why it's surprising that he thinks I'm about to baby trap him. Thing is, the first chance I got, which still took a long time, I got my tubes tied. I literally can't get pregnant. I reminded him of this fact and that made him go really quiet. He didn't even apologize or say anything, so I told him that if he's going to be like this over a made-up issue in his head, I don't know how much I trust him in a real crisis. Now I'm wondering if I was too harsh and what steps we can take to move forward, or if I'm the right amount of angry and I should just end it. I have no idea what to do right now. She's the right amount. She's the right amount. Oh, she's the right amount. Dude, this dude's delusional. So wait, she has her tubes tied. You've been having sex for now a long time. With no protection because she has her tube types. Maybe. And you think all of a sudden she's just going to be pregnant? <laughs> and she doesn't want to have kids. She doesn't want to. She's told you. Bro, like. She's delusional. One conversation del- with your uncle yeah. sending you off the rocker. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I wouldn't trust him either. Be like, you can go have one conversation. Now you're a fucking changed person. Yeah. Like, what's going to happen in the future that you're going to change your mind? Literally. And your opinion on everything. You're untrustworthy. That's so crazy. Like, how. <laughs> This guy doesn't know how like how human anatomy works. It's self sabotage. Yeah, maybe he wanted to break up with her for some reason. I don't maybe know. it's something else, and that's what he's leaning on. But like, you're so easily manipulated, and like, are able to be self sabotage like that? That's wild. But it has nothing to do with his relationship. Like, what an idiot. Yeah, there is an update that I haven't read yet. Update: It's been an exhausting week, both at home and work. Basically, we're not engaged anymore. He's moving back to his parents and our relationship is over while he works on himself. To answer some questions, no, he wasn't cheating, nor was there a secret baby on the side. Half a yes to him having second thoughts, half a yes to him being influenced by families and friends. I won't go too much into the details, just that his uncle's family were always awful to him. They were always the go-to babysitters and he has trouble standing up for that generation of his family. He's impressionable and he has trouble separating fact from fiction because of that and them. Another factor is that one of his formerly child-free friends announced his wife's pregnant during New Year's and he's been excited about it. My ex-fiance is wondering if he changed his mind, especially since his parents do want to have grandchildren and have been asking if we're going to wait before having them. After dog sitting for his uncle, apparently all that combined in his mind and I changed my mind and I'd surprise him about it, which is the core of the matter for me. Whether he forgot I had my tubes tied doesn't matter. He was projecting his fears, anxiety, and trauma onto me and punishing me for something that I didn't even do or say and then made me to be the deceptive partner because of that projection. He stopped trusting me because he was afraid of what the warped version he built up in his mind might do. That wasn't okay and that's why I ended it. He's been moving his stuff out all week and he's told me he's going back into therapy. His parents will be there to help him and they separately apologized to me. They had no idea how bad his anxiety is. I'll be there to support him as a friend and I've been trying to say that it's on pause. But typing this out also makes me realize that no matter what, I wouldn't be able to win against those fears. Nor can I trust him to ever really fully trust me against them. Good. Move on. But like, don't even be there as a friend. Like, don't make it harder than it needs to be. That's true. You need to just cut and move on with your life. You stay in there as a friend. You're giving him hope. You're complicating your feelings and your emotions. Like, mm. just just move out. Just yeah. move on. Just cut. Just drop it. Cold turkey. Move on with your life. Like, there's so many issues there that he made it your problem, which shouldn't have been at all, mm-hmm. that he should have handled on his own. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't. I wouldn't be able to trust him. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad just he's going into therapy. Everything. Huh? Just projecting everything. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm glad he's going into therapy and getting the help that he needs. Because, yeah, it does sound like he is very impressionable and he does um, 
kind of take everyone's opinions and you can't have a partner who is going to change their opinion on a whim and is super impressionable like that like how can you build a life with somebody like that yeah exactly yeah it's very concerning but i'm very happy that she stood her ground as she knew her worth yeah exactly. no matter it doesn't sometimes love isn't enough like no matter how much you love that person like there are things that can get in the way yep 100 percent yeah all right well thank you for joining us for another thread talk tuesday i hope you guys like this episode with red flags Teresa, jeff fun yeah i had lots of fun i, I had think fun. it was a fun episode yeah it was thank you all you guys for supporting us tiktok is blowing up right now youtube is being solid so make sure you guys check us out on there show us some love we appreciate it thanks to all of you guys listening to these episodes that we are gaining so much uh traction you know what would actually help us with a little bit more traction if you could just share this with like a couple of your friends who might think some of these stories are funny or maybe they need uh freshen up on some red flags in their relationship <laughs> or something like that just share this with a couple people and it really helps us out with uh, the algorithm yeah we would really appreciate that and we would also appreciate a five star on spotify and apple podcast um i think we're at 50 50 yeah. reviews on they're, spotify they're climbing. They're yeah climbing. i feel like that's so exciting like we've had a couple what? people message us we're like oh we're so happy we found you we've been binging every episode I now love we can't it. wait for more of them and everything so if you've been binging like let us know um just so we could say thank you um because we love receiving those messages and it really it makes my day so yeah it really helps it helps us give us the motivation to, mm-hmm. to keep on keep on building keep on going forward this is going to be episode 15 wow 15 episodes wow that's wild that's exciting it is exciting yeah Oh, yeah, it's been a good it's been a ride so far. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. The Den, second episode in the Den. The Den's coming together. Yeah. Got a lot more done. Got the lights under your seat. Got the cat hammock done up. Playing around with the lighting. Trying to get a good lighting situation for YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, let us know how the, you guys think the lighting is, what we can improve. Any suggestions for us is always, uh, is always welcomed. Yeah. And I think the next episode that we're going to film is going to be with Madison, right? Next I think Friday. So, yeah. We might film one on Sunday. I'm not 100% sure, but upcoming within the one or two episodes after this, we got a Madison episode. That one's going to be a baby talk episode with a couple other ones mixed in there. But we're going to go hang out with Madison, who is my sister, and she is uh, pregnant with a little baby boy on the way. So, we are going to, uh, you know, do an episode with her and get some of her takes on some of these, having another guest on. Yep. Very excited. Exactly. Me too. I don't know why I said exactly. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) All right. Well, we got to go. We got an appointment for our cat and uh, (laughs) we'll see you guys next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Bye.